it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and today I'm designing a layout for Bramble Fox using some items from the February Fox box as well as a um, metal die from Bramble Fox that is number 14 the film strip die you can see there and I'm also going to be using some of the older paper snips. So I've got a couple of photos of my little boy on a day out. We went up to um, our local National Trust manor house and we were just walking through the gardens and he's just pulling these silly faces and it's just him all over. You ask him to smile for a photo and he'll do a couple and then he just does silly faces. Um, and when I saw the authentic title in the Fox box, it just made me think of his silliness and how authentic these photos are and how they really represent a day out with my little one. So um, I've had them a while now and I thought it is long overdue. Um, time to scrap them. So I've pulled out two of them. I think I had a series of about four or five. I've picked two and I've cut them into squares. They are two and a half inches square and I've stuck the two together on some white cardstock and then mounted that with black cardstock because I'm using that black title so I want to bring in a couple of tones of black to my page. And I'm using 49 and Market's Spectrum Sherbet collection. This collection has kind of two halves to it. It had a blue and a green side and then a pinky orange side as well. And I can't remember the colour. I think the pink and orange side was called like strawberry lemonade or something. But I've got the blues and greens I've pulled out today to match the colours in my photos. And then I'm going to accent that with some blacks. So I've pulled out a few of the die cut pieces and I'm just layering up those behind my photo. And then I've got that fox cut die, um, the film strip over on the right hand side. I've cut that from one of the journaling cards and I also cut the second half from black cardstock and decided not to place it behind the film strip itself. I just wanted the blue over on that side. So I've got that half there, but I do use the black bit. You saw that I had cut at the beginning. I do use that in a minute. Um, but at the moment, it's just about kind of layering things up, seeing where I want them to go, um, just to give me an idea of how much of my background that covers, because I am going to add a little bit of mixed media. So um, it's nice to know what is going to be on my background so I can then add the mixed media and know that I'm not going to cover it all up. Because more often than not, you spend ages doing a mixed media background and then you get carried away sticking things down and you cover it up. Um, but I really wanted my mixed media to show around the edge of all my sort of layers and my photos today. So I've got all of that stuck together and I've drawn around that with a pencil so it gives me a guide. And I'm going to do some stamping on my background. Now I've got this stamp here, I can't remember for the life of me where it's from. It's got a large butterfly but it's also got some text on it and it was a text I really wanted. Um, I've got an actual um, scripty font stamp um, but I just didn't really fancy the shape as a rectangle shape and sometimes it just looks a little bit too square and abrupt on the page and I like the shape of the font at the top of this where it was kind of just one word and then two words and then a few more words and it just had a nice shape to it. So I'm not worried about getting the shape of the stamp, oh that's the other stamp I was talking about there. You can see it's quite blocky but I wasn't worried about getting these stamps perfect on the background because I knew that only parts of it were going to show around the edges so I've repeated it several times on my background um, sometimes in its entirety other times I've just used the top of the stamp that's got that text but it's just there to add a bit of interest and detail to my background so I've used black stays on ink for that because it's waterproof um, once it's on the page, it doesn't smear or smudge when you add water or inks on top of it. So it's fantastic for backgrounds. So then I've come in with a Distress Oxide and that was Salty Ocean, a nice blue colour to match the jumper my little boy is wearing in the photo. And I'm just using a sponge to add my mixed media. Now this is a trick I learned from Josephine when she was on the design team. Um, and it's fantastic. I love the texture it gives. So it's just a kitchen cleaning sponge that has a scourer on one side and it's the scouring side I use. Um, and I just dab it in my ink or my paint, whatever I'm using, and then put that straight on my background. And I just love the control it gives me um, and sort of the subtle color. It doesn't completely cover the page. So I've just put that Distress Oxide on some packaging, mixed a bit of water in and then added that to my background. And I did the same thing there with a Distress Ink in Mode Lawn to bring in a bit of green. 
I also wanted to add some black splatters, but my background wasn't quite dry enough so I could see it was starting to soak in and kind of spread out and bleed into those colours. So I've quickly dried that up and I will come back to my splatters at the end. I just rolled a paper towel over that background just to dry it off because I'm really impatient and I don't like to leave things and wait and come back to them. I wanted to just sit and finish off my layout. So um, rather than using a heat gun because I find sometimes that warps my page, I've just rolled a paper towel over. And it does lift a little bit of the colour, but that's okay. You can still see that I've got clear blue and green areas and you can see some of those black splatters, but I'm not worried about soaking those up because I'm going to add some more in at the end. So now I've got my title in place, I am going to add to that, so I've got the authentic title from the February Fox Box, but I'm going to add some little alphabet stickers and I've had these in my stash for years um, and I can't remember where I got them from, but I remember they went out of stock really quickly and then when they came back in stock I ordered about eight sets of them, I think they were discontinued and they were being sold off so I bought lots of sets so that um, I wouldn't run out because certain letters like E's and S's I tend to run out of really quickly um, so I've got loads of these in my stash and I've just added the word always above my title there so it's always authentic and I thought that described my little boy perfectly well and then I'm adding in some little um, kind of like tealy turquoisey coloured um, perspectives from the fox box. I've got two almost like little speech bubbles with a heart cut out of them and then I've got uh, a little blue heart to go down the bottom as well and I've added that under my photo. And I've also had a rummage through my stash to see what else I could use. I wanted some more black on my page. And you can see just above my photos, I've added that film strip part, um, the backing part that I've used from the Fox Dyes number 14. So I've got some black at the top. I've got my title, which is black. I've added a black heart down at the bottom as well to go with that lovely blue one. And then I've also got a set here of the Holy Moly Perspectives. Um, these are a, a little bit older now. I think they were released last year in a few colourways. So I thought I'd bring in some of the black ones just to add a few more pops of black accents on the page. And now everything is kind of dry, so I'm going to come back in with my black splatters. And this is watered down black acrylic paint. Again, just on some Bramble Fox packaging. I never, ever bin my Bramble Fox packaging. I always keep it because it is fantastic for when I'm doing mixed media and mixing paints and adding water to inks. I always use my Bramble Fox packaging. Um, and for the packaging technique, it's really easy as well because it's quite small pieces of plastic. So never bin your Bramble Fox packaging. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've added my black splatters. I have also held my paintbrush up higher in the air and then squeezed the bristles with my fingers to let some of that paint drop from height and it's created some really nice big black splatters on my page and um, it's also turned my nails black so I will be going to work tomorrow <laughs> with a black nails because this paint is really hard to get off no matter how hard I scrub um, so yeah I'll be going to work with black nails but never mind um, <laughs> if anybody asks I'll have to explain that one um, but yeah I really like how those large splatters look and they've added some black detail in there going through my photo sort of in a diagonal line and then I'm coming in with some of the paper snips so I think I ended up using paper snips number one it might be actually um, quite old now we've got loads of paper snips available in the store but I wanted some more black so I've pulled out three in total that had black strips on them and I've cut out the bits that I felt matched my photo. So I've got happy life up at the top and then this stuff matters down at the bottom. And that is me finished. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the layout and it gives you some inspiration. I love that I'm using the February Fox Box for non-Valentine's layouts. Valentine's is something I don't tend to scrap. So um, I am loving using this Fox Box for different themes. Um, and I hope it's given you some inspiration as well. I'll leave some links down in the description box for you as always to our Facebook group and to our website. Um, and please do join the Facebook group because you'll find loads of inspiration in there and also the details for our monthly challenge. So thanks for joining me um, and I'll see you next time.